Hey guys, it's Steven here back with another video. How are you all doing today? Welcome back to another episode of the Transfer Target. I know you think you're straight away. What happened to you? I shaved my beard off. It'll be back. Don't worry. Don't mock me. Uh, the beard will be back. And as wonderful, what a segue, as One Football. One Football is sponsoring my channel once again in the month of September. And I'm absolutely delighted to be back on board with One Football, the best football app bar absolutely none on the market. You can get it for the wonderful price of zero pounds and zero pence. It's absolutely free you can download it in the link in the description below for all your Manchester City news and all your transfer go <laughs> well if, if there's any transfer gossip and all the updates and stats you need ahead of the Premier League season so go download it in the link in the description below and I promise you I'll grow my beard but I'm pretty soon <laughs> I don't know why I did it I've seen it on camera now and it's terrifying but anyway I've got a bit of an exclusive today yep I've got an exclusive little old esteemed company Stephen McInerney has an exclusive I, I rarely have these things um I tend to hear a little bits of information every now and then but I would largely tend to not post it unless I think it's it's ultra reliable uh, and this instance I have heard some very 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 reliable and um, I can't really give the source away of course but some ridiculously reliable news about Mr. Tosin Adarabayo um, and it's not good news if I'm being I'm being honest to be honest um if we're being honest, to be honest, uh, I'm not happy about it, really. The news I've heard today, and the reason I'm making a video about this is because I trust this source implicitly, is that Tosin Adarabai wants to leave Manchester City Football Club, um, which is a massive, massive blow. I think he's a very good footballer, and more importantly, he just belongs at this club to the extent he's been here for since he was like eight years old. He really connects with Manchester City, and only recently he was saying in the press that one day he dreams of being Manchester City's captain, and I don't doubt that he was being 1,000% sincere with that but at the same time maybe he's been looking around this summer and thinking I ain't going to get a chance really and he fancies a move elsewhere now in terms of Adderall Bayou you may be thinking is he really worth the hassle for me he 1 billion percent is. I really, really rate him. I don't think people quite realise how much he's improved over uh, Blackburn last season. Um, he's improved an awful lot. He's not just the gangly, nervy young lad that we saw when he first broke into the Manchester City team uh, in the Carabao Cup games and so on, where he looked a little bit like um, a rabbit caught in the headlights, basically. He was all legs and all arms, and he's got a very big frame. He's like six foot five, but he was quite slender, hadn't quite grown into his physique yet. Um, and he's absolutely nothing like that. He did have a very average look at West Brom where they played him at right back which was kind of weird he played him at right back quite a bit and he hadn't really settled yet into men's football as Patrick Vieira once termed it um, he hadn't really adapted to senior football yet and he hadn't really found his I guess his confidence at, at this level which was understandable because the championship is a very hard level to try and uh, break into at, at any age it really is one of the most toughest leagues in world football I genuinely believe that by the way I think championship is ridiculously hard to break into it's a pressure cooker environment um, it's very physical um and there's lots of quality players there. And he struggled a little bit initially, but a year later, after like 40, 50 games, he started to really find his feet. And Blackburn last season, he was fantastic. Now, people think of uh, Adarabayo as being not that good in the ball, which I just don't get at all. I think it's because they saw him initially when he was like playing that, that game against Chelsea in the FA Cup where Pellegrini threw it. And he saw a guy who was a little bit nervy and he wasn't really comfortable yet and he gave the ball away a few times. But he's absolutely nothing like that. <clears throat> As an academy player, he was absolutely known for bringing the ball out of defence and playing those breaking the line passes that Guardiola loves so famously. He was known for that. It always took now is basically a little bit of confidence and, and strength and awareness and, 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 use, and basically being used to the men's game and championship level to find that confidence once again. And at Blackburn, he's been fantastic at bringing the ball out. He's been stepping into midfield. He's been breaking the lines, playing absolutely delightful passes. Go check my Twitter, by the way, if you don't believe me. This compilation that I posted um, an hour or so ago about Adarabayo, and he's a very good passer of the ball and also he's starting to get very physical and very strong and you can pull it bully you can genuinely bully and push people off the ball um, and he's becoming a heck of a defender now the reason he wants to leave allegedly um, according to what I've heard is that he feels like he needs to just settle down and play some permanent football and to be honest I don't really blame him I'm gutted about this because I really I really rate him I would actually be more comfortable with him getting a go next season than Garcia. I think he's got more physicality. I mean, Garcia is a very intelligent defender, but he doesn't have the pace or the physicality that Adarabayo has. And I think Adarabayo is a very underrated footballer technically as well. I really think he is. Uh, but it looks likely that basically Adarabayo is going to move on because he doesn't really fancy his chances of playing regular at Manchester City. And he wants to move on and just start his career. And can anyone really, really blame him? Now, we've had a whole summer of shenanigans about our centre-back options. And um, everyone's been going, oh, what's going on with our centre-back? See, we've had... Ake and the link to Gulabali and Jimenez and Garcia's future has been discussed and Otamendi's future has been discussed and Stone's future has been discussed but at no point has little old Tossin Adarabayo been mentioned and if I was in his shoes I would be thinking well 
I don't think they really notice that I'm here, you know? Maybe they don't realise that I'm here, so maybe I need to get their attention a little bit, and they need to stop taking me for granted, and they need to realise that actually what they've got right in front of them, staring them down right in the eyes is a very good centre-back option. And maybe, just maybe, if I ask to leave, maybe they'll realise, actually, take me seriously. Um, and I wouldn't blame him for that at all. And I do think, largely, uh, there is interest in him. I've heard their interest from three clubs. Fulham, Everton and West Ham are all interested in signing Romayo, for what I've heard. Um, by the way, I know I'm saying what I've heard. I wouldn't say this if it wasn't reliably sourced. You know me, I don't pretend to be in the know. I never once in a million years would I pretend to be in the know. But I heard this from someone who said, feel free to share it if you want to. Um, I trust you and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's someone who would definitely know, put it that way. Um, and I'm only sharing this because I thought you guys would be interested in it. And that doesn't mean going forward, by the way, that when I'm talking about other transfers, I'm going to know fuck all about them. I'm just a fan like you guys. Occasionally, I will hear things because of my social media and because of people I know at games and stuff like that. Occasionally, I will hear things. Um, but mostly, when I'm talking about Kulabali, I just know what you guys know, you know. So I'm not pretending to be an in-the-know in general. It's just in this instance, I, tend, I, I just know something about this particular scenario. Back to Adder I mean... He's probably very tired. I mean, he's 23 next week. He turns 23 in about eight days or something like that. Uh, so he's probably thinking to himself, I need to get on with my career, you know? Like, uh, there's some good clubs in, uh, interested in me. I had a very good season at Blackburn. The Blackburn fans loved him. They genuinely did. Uh, you don't have to search Adarabayo, you know, on Twitter and realise that loads of Blackburn fans uh, are, are really enamoured of him. They thought he was absolutely excellent and they wanted him back this season. Uh, that's not going to happen, of course. And he's shown what he could be. And I've always said about Adarabayo is that he's a work in progress. He'll get stronger and more comfortable. And he already has that pace. He already has that size. He already has that physicality. All he needed to do is grow into his frame and start to find his confidence. Before you know it, you'd have a big, strong, fast ball playing centre back. I mean, what more could you want than that? And all we needed to do was give him that time to develop and show some trust in him when he actually needed it. And I don't think we've done that. I don't think he wants to be fifth choice at Manchester City Football Club. I think if we told him next season he'd be fourth choice, uh, he'd be. Um, Koulibaly, you know, Laporte, Ake, and then maybe Adarabayo, Stones would of course be there instead. But if it was, Stones had moved on as Adarabayo, I think he would have stayed. But I don't think he wants to be fifth or sixth choice. I don't think he wants to be behind Stones, Otamendi, uh, Garcia, everyone else who will come in. I don't think he wants that. I can't really blame him. Can you blame him? I mean, it doesn't seem unreasonable to want to start developing your career. Um... And I've also always said that you've got to bear in mind that the same age Van Dijk was playing at Celtic, you know. Uh, with all due respect to Celtic, that is a level below the championship. And I, and I hand on heart believe that. I, I mean, Celtic may, may, may do fine in the championship, but they may do fine in the lower half of the Premier League. I don't know. But what I will say is playing against the likes of Dundee and Hibernian, they they are a lower level than the championship. They just are. Um and Adarabayo is doing very well in a better league at the same age as Van Dijk was when he was at Celtic. And obviously, he's not playing European competition. That will I will hold my hands up on that and say, like Celtic play, you know, in the European competition. Adarabayo doesn't. But what I'm saying is that if he was over at Celtic now, he'd be just he would be pressing as well. I'm sure he would be. Um, and I'm not saying he's going to reach Van Dijk's level. But what I'm saying is, at the same age, Van Dijk wasn't playing at the highest level regularly, uh, which is just true. He obviously went to uh, Southampton, then he went to Liverpool, uh, and I. I really do believe that in two or three years from now, we could be looking at Adarabayo being just a complete perfect centre-back. Genuinely, he has all the attributes to get better and better. So what I want Manchester City to do now is, like, Adarabayo loves this club. He said he recently wanted to be captain, and I don't believe he was lying, but I also think at the same time, maybe he started to realise, I need to just look after my career. Now, I'm not even saying either that... Um, he might not stay. He might stay. He genuinely might stay. He might change his mind again. The humans, you know, might realise the offers he's got aren't quite what he wants and he's better off at City with another loan somewhere. That's very possible. But I do believe that this source has told me that uh, largely he does want to move on. But he may... What I want City to do now, basically, going back to that original point, is want City to... Um, if they're going to move him on, respect his wishes. Uh, he's got a year left on his contract, so he's got the upper hand here, unfortunately, for City. I mean, he's not going to sign a contract, I would guess, unless something disastrous happens in terms of his potential moves and he decides to stay at City. Um, but I want him to basically um, be respected by City. And if City sell him, sell him with a, a buyback clause. Sell him for £8 million to somewhere else, you know. Sell him to a club that's going to play him. And have, I don't know, have a £20, £25 million buyback clause so we get to see him in the Premier League. Hopefully he plays well in the Premier League. Hopefully he impresses and shows what he can do. And then in a year's time we think, actually... 
Do you know what? Fernandinho's probably retired. Uh, we'll probably move Stones on. Who knows what we need defensively. But we can bring him back for 20 odd million. He could be a proven uh, Premier League defender. He can be homegrown. He can be club trained as well because he would be all those things. He'd be a Manchester City fan. I'm not saying he was born a City fan, but I know when you've been at the City since you're eight years old, you're of course going to love this club. And if you can do all that, we can say to him basically, we come back and then you're ready. And that would be good business. We basically would have spent uh, a little bit of money getting him developed. We would have you know, spent about 12, 15 million after the buyback clause and all that kind of stuff if that happened but it would be money well worth spending if we could see him develop in the Premier League and I want City to do that now sell him respect his wishes but give him uh get a buyback clause let him try and convince him uh, and the club they're going to sell it to to actually install that because that would be a good deal I reckon uh, Adorabayo I think he's better than most people realize I genuinely think he is I think he's got a lot of potential and I feel like this could be one that got away if we're not very careful. Um, a bit of breaking news there for you guys. I mean, it never happens on this channel. Um, but I've got an exclusive, so I thought I'd share a video on it. Um, feel free to carry on mocking me now for the lack of a beard. Why did I do it? <laughs> I hope you're all really well. I also want to say thank you to all these guys scrolling down the side. These are my patrons who help support this channel, patreon.com forward slash esteem company. And also thank you to all the YouTube members as well who are also listed there. Guys, I'll be doing a live very soon so all the members can get in the comments and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I took a few days off because I was a little bit tired um, and also went away at the weekend and I celebrated my birthday. And I needed a few days off because the season is about to get very, very hectic uh, and it's going to be fun. Anyway, I'll be on Twitch at some point very soon as well. Twitch.tv forward slash esteem company. Go follow me on there. Uh, let me know in the comments what you make of it and there's an exclusive for you. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you later.